I'm Stephen Foskett from Gestalt IT, and we are here at Flash Memory Summit in Santa Clara, California. I am meeting up with some of the groups that are defining the standards that are going to shape the IT industry in the future. And if you've listened to the Gestalt IT Utilizing Tech podcast, you know that I am enthusiastic about CXL. We did a whole season of Utilizing CXL. Uh, you can find it at utilizingtech.com. But I am thrilled to have here with me uh, Jim Pappas and uh, Curtis Bowman, who are deeply involved in this spec. So let's start off, uh, Curtis, if we can. Tell us a little bit, what is CXL in your words? So CXL is a high-speed, low-latency interconnect that was designed to connect and expand memory as well as heterogeneous compute devices. It was formed in 2019 with the release of its first spec and it now has over 250 members that help us advance the spec uh, from 1.1 to 2.0 to 3.0. And what is it that CXL does though? I mean, why, why do we care? Jim, you've got the best answer for that, so I'm going to let you why, why, why are standards so important? Well, let's talk. I think he wants to know about yep. CXL yeah. specifically. Um, um, uh, CXL is, has really unlocked um, uh, a lot of new capabilities on the platform. So the PCI SIG did this wonderful thing that really enabled CXL. They came up with a, a, a new mode called alternate protocol mode, which a device when it, it gets brought up on the PCI bus, on the PCI wires, it could say that I know how to speak a different protocol. And CXL uh, took advantage of this feature uh, that the PCI SIG um, gave to the industry. So with CXL, in addition to the types of transactions you could do over PCI, we could duplicate all of those types of transactions, but we also bring new capabilities um, that were really not available before. So for an example, we could do memory type transactions rather than block IO type of transactions or IO uh, initiated transactions. Um, you could treat this like memory. You could do load store instructions across this with, you could, you know, do um, down to the byte level, you could make modifications to, to memory. So. That's the first big thing. The other big thing is that um, we also could share memory that if there's the memory in the device, that could be shared with memory in the CPU. So the device, if it has its memory, it could map it into the CPU's coherent memory space. Likewise, the device could access to memories in the CPU. They could also cache the information and the protocol will also keep those two caches in each device coherent. Now this probably sounds a lot like what happens. Um, most CPU architectures have a private bus that goes between them that, um, like for dual processor systems, it allows the two processors to act very, very closely, almost like one. Now that same capability is now duplicated with any device that wants to attach to CXL. So that's what CXL 1.0 brought in, mm -hmm. and 1.1. And um, because of this, and these new capabilities, the growth of this uh, consortium has, has been phenomenal, as Curtis said earlier. We have over 250 members. And in, in practice, what this has allowed today is memory expansion not on the memory bus. That's right. correct. But where does this go from here? <laughs> well, first of all, let's just talk about the memory expansion that's not on the memory bus, okay. what you say. <laughs> so what's going on is that the number of cores in a machine have been growing at a faster rate than the amount of memory that you could attach to the machine. And really, each core, or that basically down to each thread, might need a certain amount of memory. And so this has been a real challenge. So what CXL allows is easy attach of almost any amount of memory to a system. You know, are the CPUs that my company builds or, or, or Curtis's company builds, um, it's a limit of how much memory you could attach. And you, once you reach that limit, you just can't go any further. Um, 
By using CXL, you can get additional memory attached to the system, um, and it's, as I said, almost endless. Yeah, and, and kind of take that to its next extent, right, is if you go outside the box, you can start to see a memory expansion mm -hmm. deck that you would have that would, maybe it has 10 terabytes in it. That's probably not going to be all assigned to one system, and so the idea of memory pooling and memory sharing come in, mm -hmm. where you can attach that box to your system and, and across multiple servers and, and allocate from that as you need it. Um, in the case of pooling, it would be a dedicated one-to-one, -one, and in the case of sharing, you could share that information between multiple servers, which reduces the need to move data, so that reduces mm -hmm. time, but it also reduces energy footprint. That's right. This all sounds an awful lot like what we in the storage industry have been doing for a long time with enterprise storage. Is, is this analogous to the world of enterprise storage? There are a lot of similarities between what we're trying to do and what storage has already done. And I often talk about it, right? We got to quit thinking about reliability, which servers talk about. Start thinking about availability, which is what storage talks about. Uh, you need to think about provisioning that storage already has in its mind. So there are many of those concepts that have come from storage into the memory space for us. Um, now, there are some things that, that don't apply, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are very fixed in our transaction time. If you get too long, you don't just store your, you know, uh, cause a, a, a stall on your own core. You can actually start to stall multiple cores and bring a full system down if you if you have challenges. So we, we do have to think about those a little differently than what the, the IO-based solutions have. And, and that's built into the protocol. Mm -hmm. it, it's, so it is, um, the, um, I, I'll, can I add a little bit more onto that? Yeah. I, uh, everything you said was correct. And there are a lot of similarities. Um, and But one way to think of it is that storage operates in blocks, yep. you know, large blocks, 4096 or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, CXL could operate as fine as memory transactions. Mm -hmm. So um, CXL um, makes it more memory-like or I.O., mm -hmm. but um, that's the big change between what's happening in storage, what's happening in memory, but many of the challenges the storage industry um, solved are also being built into what CXL has. Yeah, yep. and I think that that's one of the questions, I'm glad that you mentioned that, mm -hmm. because one of the things that immediately springs to mind is if we're doing, any, if we're doing memory pooling and memory sharing mm -hmm. and, and outside the box, there's a big concern about security um, mm -hmm. and integrity of this. And you've talked a little bit about integrity, but what about mm -hmm. security? What's to stop a malicious actor from using mm -hmm. the CXL bus to access um, data that it shouldn't mm -hmm. have? So, by the way, the PCA SIG that I know you interviewed earlier, yep. um, they, um, they do have a security spec, and it's called IDE, and we are taking the same security uh, so that every transaction, every wire from end to end, it gives you complete security. So um, we are working very, very closely with the PCI SIG. It's probably, we, we work with many organizations, but our interaction with the PCI SIG is probably the strongest because we live on their wires. Mm -hmm. and we actually take advantage mm -hmm. of that wonderful ecosystem that they've built. So the, um, so they've, address this problem or continue to address it and we are following and implementing the same things there are some other specific things uh, that are going on in cxl that are more memory specific but yes i believe we are taking a really hard look yeah. and making sure that this works properly so you're you're aware of the security questions yes. very much so yes. and another another question that i have for you all is is CXL mostly for memory, or is it for things other than memory? So first implementations are going to be for memory. Okay. And the reason is there's a pent up demand for the solution that it brings there. Uh, you know, Jim kind of hit on it earlier, right? You can only add so much memory in DIMM slots, and then you're out of space. The server limits how much you can do. Plus, it all has to be fairly close, and so there are thermal, th thermal things to think about. As you use uh, CXL then to extend that, I now can put my memory in different places where it's easier to power, easier to cool, 
even bring it outside the server where it has its own uh, you know, power supply, its own cooling solutions. So I think that you know, those are the kind of things that we look forward to as we go on the memory front. Now, there are heterogeneous compute solutions that will be coming. They're not as strongly desired because right now there's solutions in the space. Yes, exactly. And so it's not broken. So they don't need an immediate fix, but they will be coming. They'll be looking at what we can do on CXL. They're going to want to take advantage, I think, of memory expansion as well. But once they have CXL as an interface, then they are going to start figuring out how else can I innovate by using the interface. And, and well, the reason that I bring that up is we're at Flash Memory Summit. <laughs> we're not at uh, Memory Memory Summit. Um, <laughs> is this a relevant to the storage industry? The, the biggest area, I think, or the, the first element will be um, in the computational storage area. So computational storage um, combines storage with computation. So an SSD may have a processor on it that does, it, it participates in the algorithm or the work so that for data that needs to be manipulated close to where the data lives, could, could happen. So that's one area that um, this will happen. And accelerators in general will benefit largely from CXL because right now accelerators sit on the other side of a PCI bus and it's an IO interface between the two. As I mentioned earlier, because they could share memory and they could cache memory and they could have uh, coherent caches, this works um, very, very well for accelerators. But at the same time, accelerators today are built on PCI. So as Curtis said, the I know that there's development for accelerators underway, but the, it's not as urgent because they exist on the interfaces of today. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at composable systems, they've done great jobs of being able to um, reconfigure the amount of resources, whether it's cores or whatever, uh, storage or networking, for the specific needs of an application and configure those. But the one thing that has been out of reach has been configuring memory. Because the way memory is today, it's, it's captive to the CPU that it's attached to. So CXL breaks that, and for that industry that's doing composable systems, expect to see that flourish yeah. because now the most important element has now become interreach because of CXL. And, and I think that that's one of the things that most people are um, uh, becoming aware of is that CXL and composability are two topics that really go hand in hand. Uh, CXL doesn't instantly enable composability, um, but yet in the future, I think that this protocol and the work that's being done to support it is going to make composability possible in a way that it's never been before. And the same is true of concepts like rack scale or even data center scale that's compute right. architecture. Mm -hmm. I really do look forward to seeing where this mm -hmm. is where this is going. I, I do want to ask you quickly, um, we've got representatives here from a couple of companies that know a little bit about uh, the current state of CXL. Uh, what is the current state of CXL from a uh, server CPU perspective? So, uh, the the AMD processor that was just launched called Genoa is a uh, support of the 1.1 plus some stuff from 2.0 that got pulled in. Okay. And so it's it's out on the market, ready to go, and waiting for CXL plug-in devices, which we've tested early devices and and. Uh, you know, as you look on the show floor here, you can see a lot of the devices that, that are in test and ready for production. How and, about Intel? And likewise, <laughs> uh, Intel's uh, latest servers also ship with um, CXL, and we've been enabling the industry um, with uh, pre-production machines for several years now. So um, the ecosystem is uh, really developing very well. And in our labs, we've been working with uh, virtually every company that's building CXL um, products. Do you, uh, what about other CPU architectures? Is CXL going to be supported in other architectures? Well, it certainly is uh, supported. ARM um, is represented on the CXL board. And, uh, and also since the beginning, in fact, they, they came in as contributors. Mm -hmm. And um, IBM Power is also, um, part of it. In fact, when um, 
CXO was first launched. Um, um, on the day we actually incorporated, we brought additional companies in. Intel was already there, but we also brought AMD, ARM, and IBM Power. And they were all board members on day one of, mm -hmm. of the incorporation of, the, of CXL. Well, that's great. It's it's really great to hear the status of this. It's it's cool that it's being supported by all major CPU architectures. It's uh, it seems you know from from the outside that it's being supported by basically everybody in the industry, mm -hmm. and it's very exciting to see where this is going to go next. So thank you both so much for joining me for this video. Uh, again, where can we uh, connect with uh, with the uh, CXL effort and learn more? Best place to go is the Compute Express link. Dot org website, okay. and uh, you can find the membership, you can find uh, a lot of resources available to you, and if you want to become a member, you can figure out how to sign up. And there's training videos, there's a lot of information mm -hmm. there. And by the way, is in terms of joining, um, CXL is, um, any company could join, so it's not, there's no, not a closed membership or anything, so any, any company can join. Um, there's a fee to join at the contributor level if you do so. It's, it's a very modest fee, actually. Mm -hmm. But the, um, you would be able to uh, participate in any of the working groups um, uh, and you know, to help to find where this is going. Also, we did something that's very unique and almost unheard of in the industry. Our adopter level class that's below the contributor level that's absolutely free to join. So any company could join CXL for free. Mm -hmm. So It's great to see the ecosystem coming together to support this standard. And it's a very exciting standard. And I would remind you as well that if you go to Utilizing Tech, you can see a whole season of the Utilizing CXL podcast where we interview some of the folks, including this guy right here, in more depth about CXL. Uh, check that out again at utilizingtech.com or Gestalt IT video on YouTube and also look for some more videos like this at gestaltit.com. Thank you for joining us and uh, we will see you soon.